Arguably Einstein's greatest scientific legacy is his general theory of relativity, his elegant theory of gravity. What he wound up showing was that space and time, the fabric of gravitation, can ripple. It can actually have waves of gravity. Even though Einstein had predicted gravitational waves, he never thought they'd be detectable. That was an idea that Einstein put forward a hundred years ago, and it's taken us all that time to build devices sensitive enough to actually look for and really measure those gravitational waves. Einstein didn't think that we could detect gravitational waves, but today, with the technology that we have, we actually did it. On September 2015, finally, we detected gravitational waves. We measured the distortion of space-time itself. This is the LIGO laboratory at MIT. LIGO is the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory. It was funded by the National Science Foundation to detect gravitational waves, predicted by Einstein's theory of general relativity. It took more than 20 years and about 100 scientists and engineers all over the world to make LIGO work. The gravitational wave discovery is one impact your life or my life, but what we did is amazing. Gravitational waves open a new window on the universe. Einstein also thought a lot about how matter behaves at its most fundamental level. He predicted a whole new state of matter. When we take a gas of particles and cool it down almost to absolute zero, some very strange quantum behaviors start to emerge. At those ultra-low temperatures, the individual particles will lose their identities and they begin to act as one. In this lab, we are using lithium atoms to create Bose-Einstein condensates. Einstein predicted the state of matter almost 80 years ago, but only recently we have been able to produce it in a lab like this. And Einstein would never have dreamed about all the technology that needed to come together to build it. Now we are making BECs on a daily basis right here in this vacuum chamber. Our next level research is actually building the materials of the future. As we now know, Einstein was wrong at least as often as he was right. In the course of testing quantum entanglement, ultimately showing in this case Einstein was wrong, physicists have not only found entanglement is real, but it's now the bedrock for a whole new set of technologies. Industries like quantum computing that could one day make small machines like this seem like enormous monsters. So Einstein was famously wrong about quantum mechanics. This device here is a quantum computer. It contains a computer the size of a molecule and that can do computations that no classical computer could ever perform, even if it were a computer the size of the universe. And the basis for this is in Einstein's spooky action at a distance. This is what we call entanglement. Now Einstein thought that the existence of the spooky action at a distance would just kill off quantum mechanics. Instead, it became the basis for some of the most amazing things that quantum mechanics has to offer, including the basis for quantum computation. So, was Einstein right or wrong? <laughs> Scientists have spent a hundred years trying to test these questions, debating the results, inventing whole new technologies to try to dig deeper and go further. And every single time we've learned something new, that is worth celebrating. The prediction of gravitational waves was made by Einstein a hundred years ago. In that paper, he says, you know, this is such a tiny effect that nobody will ever measure it. Well, I've always been experimenting. And I did a lot of calculations on that. And I also guessed at what might be the strongest gravitational waves one would imagine. And I came to the conclusion after that, that yes, if you built this on a scale big enough, 